Welcome back, this is Steve with FHP Design. Today we're gonna to go over some bead roller basics. Today I wanna to go over some of the basic functions of this bead roller. The bead roller we're using today is a Mittler Brothers 36 inch Jamie Jordan series bead roller. Some of the things we're gonna focus on is our crank for pressure, our adjusters in and out for die spacing, and then our speed control, both the pedal and the machine dial. The first thing I wanna go over here today is bead roller die spacing. And I've got a couple of different examples here. What we've got is a Mittler Brothers adjuster. Now, on this particular bead roller, it comes with adjustable upper and lower shafts. Some of them have single adjustable shafts. You can order it either way. But what it is essentially is a collar that goes over the shaft and as you turn it, it will adjust your die spacing in or out. Now, in other videos, and you'll always hear me reference how many turns I go uh, in and out as far as die spacing, one turn on this particular roller is gonna give you about 75 thousandths more or less gap to give you an idea. Now, another option that you've got, if you don't have adjustable shafts, um, most other brands don't offer it. A simple option is to use washers. These are washers that I've turned down at some point to do my own die spacing before I had that option. Um, essentially, whatever thickness washer you have, you add them to one side, you take them away up on the top, on the bottom, wherever you put them, it's gonna give you the same effect as these adjustable shafts, just a little bit more work. That'll be down there. Now another very important function of any bead roller is gonna be your crank for your pressure up and down. This particular bead roller, just like the adjusters, one full rotation is gonna give you about 75 thousandths of an inch up or down. Now all bead rollers are going to be a little bit different. Really you're just gonna to have to play with your settings until you find what works for you and understand how your machine works if you're not using something exactly like this. A lot of this is going to be trial and error. You're going to figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. There is no set in stone way to do this. There's a hundred different ways to do everything. So it's just going to take some time. Now this is going to be your direction, on-off controls, and speed controller for this machine. All Mittler Brothers machines are equipped with forward and reverse and two different types of variable speed. You're gonna have a dial for adjustments here. It's gonna give you zero to 100% on the motor speed. And then you've also got a separate pedal, much like a TIG welder pedal, that's gonna give you one extra level of control. In this particular instance, if I was to set this at 30%, my pedal control is gonna give me zero to 100% of that 30%. So wide open on the pedal is gonna give me 30%. If I turn it up, it's gonna be the same same concept. The last thing as far as basics that I feel is important to mention, especially when you're dealing with artwork or any kind of detailed work, table. Uh, just about all Mittler machines come with a table or they offer a table option for it, for all of them. Uh, some companies don't offer table options for their bead rollers. In that case, I would highly recommend building your own at that point, but you will find that a table is going to give you a large advantage on doing any kind of intricate work. I put together a couple of scrap panels so we can go over the differences that you're gonna see with pressure changes and die space changes. On the first circle, our pass is gonna be with a tight die spacing. For our second pass, I'm going to open this die space up one and a half turns. It'll be about a hundred thousandths of an inch. I'm going to go around this second line at one and a half turns in from our first. I'm not terribly concerned about our pressure on this. Um, it's really gonna show up 
regardless. So not getting super technical there. All right, you can kind of see just with that little of a, of a change in our die spacing, our second step has got quite a wide footprint compared to the first one. And that's just in one and a half turns of indicator location. All right, now for the last pass, we're gonna go around the south side line. We're gonna go out to three turns total from our original die space. If you remember, that second one was one and a half turns. Now we're gonna go to three turns in from our original. So that's gonna equate to around 200 thousandths, 250, somewhere in there, about a quarter inch. Same scenario, speed this up just a little. <clears throat> All right, here you're really going to see quite a difference on that outside step. Um, essentially, from, from a tight die space, we go out to uh, one and a half turns. We'll, we'll just call that a medium die space and then to a wide die space. There is quite a difference. All right, so on this panel, basically all we're going to worry about is pressure. Uh, die spacing is going to stay the same through everything. On this outside line, we're going to do one specific pressure, probably two turns. We're going to go another turn deeper, probably. Whatever, we'll kind of decide as we go. And then on the inside, we're going to go a little bit deeper yet. So you're going to have a light step, a medium step, and then a tall step last. There's one turn. We'll do that at one and a half turns, I think. We'll do two passes around, and that'll just make sure the line gets set in nice and snug. So that's one pass around. I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and give it another quarter turn of pressure. Yeah, so this pass is one and three quarters of a turn of pressure. Now you'll be able to see it's got a definite bead in it, not extremely tall. And then we should be able to see a difference in our next ones when we go a little bit deeper. So that first one was one and three quarters of a turn past our touchdown point. This one, see where we end up. So there's our one and three quarter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go around this and then we'll tighten it up a little farther after one pass. And this kind of falls back on my theory. I like to do multiple passes on everything. It's gonna help with panel distortion. So it doesn't distort as much. And it's also going to help you make a little bit cleaner lines. It gives you more room for error. Okay, now we're gonna go, so what this would be is two and a quarter turn, or yeah, two and a quarter. I 
think I'm actually, we'll go to a full two and a half. Now you're gonna notice this second step is probably about twice the size of the outside step, and that's with one extra turn of pressure. This third one, we're probably gonna go somewhere around three and a quarter, three and a half turns. Um, I'm gonna make three passes around this, increasing pressure as we go. It's starting to get some distortion in it already. That is something that will happen regardless without doing any kind of free stretching. When you're trying to move this much material with these largest steps, you are gonna get some movement in that panel. That first pass was one and a half turns. That'd be two. We're just gonna go ahead up to two and a half. Go to three. I think we may leave it at three. I can feel quite a bit of tension on the adjuster, so we're pushing pretty hard on this material right now. if it'll accept another quarter. At this point, I'm really pushing on it quite a bit harder than I would any other normal work. But for the purpose of the video and to try to give you an idea of what different depths do, I'm not so much worried about what happens to the panel. You know, this is just scrap. I'm trying to give you as much visual representation of the difference. Yeah, we've got this one twisted up pretty good, but it's all right. So now if you take a look here, our first step, awfully light. The second one, you've got quite a bit more. This third one is a heck of a lot more step, especially than the first one. And that'll kind of give you an idea. Now that is the same die spacing. We didn't make any changes as far as that goes. Merely adding pressure um, as we went through there. So. Pressure, die spacing, all make a difference. Between the two of these, infinite possibilities. Um, you start incorporating wider die spacing, narrower die spacing, more pressure, less pressure, and that's essentially, every single line is nothing more complicated than that. Add it all together, mix a little creativity in, and that's where the artwork comes from. So there you have it, back to the basics. We covered basic machine function, die spacing and pressure, and we've showed you basically what those do to your lines on your sheet. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you wanna see more like it, subscribe, hit the bell notification. I can't promise when the next one's coming. We're trying to get good ideas. If you have ideas, definitely put them in the comments. Any more questions, comments, whatever i i like to whatever yeah whatever just put do whatever you want it really doesn't matter i'm just gonna i can't go anywhere because it's snowing I got in the wrong side of the car too.